The example I want to talk about now for dynamic programming is different from the previous ones. Now we are no, no longer dealing with arrays, but I will be working with graphs. So I'm going to be talking about directed and weighted graphs. Okay, so let's assume first we have directed, weighted graphs, weighted graph. The weights can be negative, okay? So some edges can have negative weights, for example. Uh, the graph doesn't have a negative weight cycle, okay? So if you look at the graph and you look at any cycle in the graph, you cannot, you should not be able to find a cycle that the sum of the weights on the edges and that cycle is negative. Okay, so the the graphs I'll be talking about, the algorithm I'll be talking about applies to such graphs. Okay, so if you have a graph that has a cycle whose weight is negative, then the graph the algorithm is not applicable to it because the notion that I will be looking for is not going to be well defined. I will be looking for shortest paths. Okay, shortest paths in the graph, but I will be looking at all pairs, shortest path. So we have seen Dijkstra's algorithm, for example. Dijkstra's algorithm takes as input a, gra a weighted graph, two nodes, i and j, and finds the shortest path from i and j. Dijkstra's algorithm runs on graphs that have no negative weight edges, okay? So to, for Dijkstra's algorithm to work, the graph cannot have negative weight edges. And Dijkstra's algorithm ha takes two specific nodes, i and j. Here I'm talking about, I give you a graph, uh, g, it has n nodes. I want n, the, the n squared matrix, the n by n matrix of pairwise distances. I want the distance from node 1 to node 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 all the way to n and from node 2 to all other nodes from node 3 to all other nodes. Of course, one solution to the problem is run the extras algorithm from every node. That is going to result in certain running time. I want you to think about that. I mean, it should be n times whatever the running time of Dijkstra's algorithm. And I want to show now that we can do better than that using, again, the recursive thinking, recursive reasoning, and dynamic programming. But please keep in mind, the weights can be negative now. So Dijkstra's algorithm cannot be run on such a, in such a graph. And the graph doesn't have a negative weight cycle. Okay. And now we want to look at all pairs shortest path in this graph. And let's assume that the nodes of the graph are v are basically they are numbered from 1 to n and let's reason about the shortest path from node i to node j from node i to node j that you basically we need to look for the shortest path from i to j that use all possible nodes in the graph but let's reason about it now again as with dynamic programming we usually look at sub solutions okay so or solutions in terms of sub uh, sub cases of the problem so think about it now that i want to find the shortest path between i and j from i to j again we are talking about directed graphs that use a subset only a subset of the of the nodes from 1 to k okay so i will look for the shortest path from i to j something like this shortest path from i to j but all the nodes all the nodes on the path from i to j, these nodes here, from x1, x2, x3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. These are the internal nodes on the path, okay, or the intermediate nodes on the path. Not i, not j, but all the other nodes on the path. So all of these x1 all the way to x8 are part of the, have to be one of the nodes from 1 to k. Okay, so I'm looking for all the short, the, sh the length of the shortest path from I to J that involve only nodes between 1 and K. Okay, of course, you know, we might not, suppose K is 3, there might be no path between I and J uh, that has only nodes between 1 and 3, in which case the length of such a path should be infinity. Okay, but if I'm thinking about it like this, now we can think about 
the recursion in terms of using the node k or not right so we are talking about the nodes from one to k and let's think about it in terms of one to k minus one okay so one imagine that p p is the shortest path okay the shortest path is okay a shortest path shortest path from i to j from i to j now p might not use j if p doesn't sorry k if p doesn't use node k then the shortest path then sorry that's not the shortest path then p then p involves only nodes in 1 to k minus 1, right? So if p is the shortest path from i to j, and that p is a path that I, by construction, I said it has to use only nodes from 1 to k, but I tell you that p doesn't use k, then it must be a path that uses some nodes from 1 to k minus 1. Now, if p does use k then what do we have then we have this scenario this is i this is j somewhere k is here and then we have a path from i to k we have a path from k to j this p1 here and p2 must be also shortest path i p1 must be a shortest path from i to k because if there's a shorter one then p itself could not be a shortest path from i to j so p1 is a shortest path from i to k p2 is the shortest path from k to j and p1 doesn't p1 and p2 use nodes in the set one to k minus one right because k is already used i mean if i if I, if I exclude k and i, and I look at the intermediate nodes on p1, so not the two endpoints of the path, not i and k, but other points on that path, there must be from nodes from 1 to k minus 1. The same thing for p2, there must be from nodes from, from, uh, one, to my, from 1 to k minus 1. And this is basically the recursive formula here. So what we are saying is that the length of the shortest path p is e either the length of the path from i to j that doesn't use k or it is the length of the shortest path from i to k plus the path from k, the, the shortest path from k to j right so if i now define if i define d i j k is the length the length of the shortest path of a shortest path from i to j that use only nodes in 1 to k as intermediate nodes. Again, these are nodes on the path excluding i and j. So if dij of k is the length of a shortest path from i to j that use only nodes in 1 to k, as intermediate nodes, then we have a formula for it, dij, based on our reasoning, is maybe this is either, an, uh, the, the length of this path is maybe a path that doesn't involve k, in which case it must be involving all the nodes from 1 to k minus 1, a subset of the nodes from 1k to minus 1, or we said it must be using k, in which case it's the length of a shortest path from i to k, that use only nodes from 1 to k minus 1 plus the length of the shortest path from k to j that use only nodes from 1 to k minus 1 and whichever of these two is the smallest then we will take this now of course if if i and j if i and j are are connect if, if i and j are connected by an edge it's the weight of that edge but more more importantly here that if k is zero 
then dig of k is some weight here, and let's call it uh, w i g, okay? And I will define this w i g, this matrix w i w i g is going to be defined for every two nodes i and j in such a way that if i and j are the same node, then this is zero, like the length of the path between i and j is zero. If i and j are not the same node, but i j is an edge, then this is just the weight of that edge i j. If i and j not the same node, but i and j, i j is not an edge, then this must be infinity. And this is what that, and if k is greater than zero, then it's this value here, okay? So this is the this is the recurrence for this uh, for this problem here for all shortest paths. Again, when I look at the length of a shortest path from i to j, if it involves k, then it is some shortest path from i to k, plus a shortest path from k to j. If it doesn't involve k, then it must be a shortest path that involves the nodes from a subset of the nodes from one to k minus one, and that's the where we take. Sorry, here I should have taken the min. Okay. So here the minimum of these two values. Okay, so th this this is basically the algorithm. We can write it. Of course, you can write this recursively because the dij of k. If you think about, you know, function d. If you call it something like this, and you have i j k, then you can call it on function d on i j k minus one, and function d on i k k minus 1 and on k j k minus 1 as well right so these are this will be the three the three uh, recursive calls if you think about this and you implement it like this you will see again what the problem is and there will be overlapping problems that this recursive implementation is not going to take care of this is why we can now write it in a dynamic programming way. The k, the value of this k, is going to be controlling things in the outer loop, right? So if we first look at the shortest path that involve the, the nodes from 1 to 1, then from 1 to 2, 1 to 3, 1 to 4, and so on. Because at the end of the day, if I want to find the length of the shortest path from i to j, then that k should be n because this is the solution that we are saying what's the shortest path between i and j that involves all the nodes from 1 to n which is what we are looking for okay so the way the algorithm would work again we have n as the number of nodes and we can build this this uh, matrix the d matrix this little d here i, I will use uh, i'll use big d for the matrix here so Remember that we have this W i j where we define it as zero W i j and infinity zero if i and g are the same W i j if i and g are not the same but there is an edge between them and infinity if i and g are not the same and there is no edge between them. So we can define the, the for as we said for the base case D of zero this for the base case, for d of 0, this distance is nothing but this matrix, right? So this matrix w is basically this matrix d of 0 when k equals 0. Now we say for k equal 1 to n, we, base, we now define d of k. It's basically... Uh, D of K is basically you initialize it an empty, basically an empty matrix, an empty n by n matrix. Okay, and now for i equal one to n, and for j equal one to n. So the i and j are going to be looping over the nodes. So i and j, we are looking for the length of the path between i and j. k is, again, 
controlling that set of nodes that can from which we can form the intermediate nodes on the path from i and j and now we are going to say basically for that matrix dij of k we are going to basically take the minimum of dij k minus one this is where the node k is not part of a shortest path between i and j of all shortest paths that involve only nodes from one to k minus one and or if i if k is part of the path if i is part of the path if k is part of the path then we shortest path from i to k and shortest path from k to j both of them involving only nodes from one to k minus one again the intermediate nodes we take this minimum from here and this is the algorithm and at the end what we need to return d to the n okay d to the n i mean here this notation of using big d for the matrix and little d for an entry in the matrix this is usually the notation in mathematics when we talk about the name of the matrix it's w or big w or big d when we talk about the specific value in computer science we like to use these square brackets the big w of ij this is really the tabular form of it but mathematically then i can take talk about little uh, w ij this will be the entry ij in the big matrix big w okay this algorithm here is known as the floyd floyd warshall algorithm floyd warshall algorithm that basically runs you can give it the matrix w which is basically in some sense is the adjacency matrix of the the of the weighted graph and this is dynamic programming algorithm and what's the running time of this algorithm here if you think about it so we have sorry we have this is n this is n this is n these are three nested loops each one of them is doing is iterating n times and this one here is o of one is just taking the, the minimum the minimum of two values this one here we are initializing a matrix again of of n squared entries here so this is if you look at this this is an o of this is basically if you think about it like uh, matrix multiplication so o of n cubed algorithm so this is an O of n cubed algorithm for finding all pairs shortest paths in a weighted graph, in a directed weighted graph, where edges can have negative weights, but we cannot have an, a cycle whose weight, the sum of the weights of the edges on that cycle is negative. Okay, And again, the reasoning, the, the, the recursive reasoning here is, if you think about the nodes, you know, you're looking at paths between I and J, and we are look, talking about, okay, let me find all the shortest path between i and j that involve nodes only up to k, from 1 to k. Then if k is not part of the solution, then I'm looking at shortest paths from, that involve only 1 to k minus 1. If k is part of a solution, then I need to look at the two paths from i to k and from k to j, both of which should involve nodes only up to k minus 1. And this will be the, we take the minimum of these two. And this gives me the recursive call. And this implementation here is not a recursive implementation, but this is a dynamic uh, programming approach that gives, gives rise to an algorithm that takes cubic time in the number of nodes in the graph.